Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at the netting process for capital gains and capital losses. Now, in the prior session, we looked at capital gains, we looked at capital losses. You want to make sure you understand capital gains and capital losses. This topic is covered in an income tax course, the CPA exam regulation, as well as the enrolled agent exam. Now, I'm going to go fairly quickly over capital gains and capital losses rate, but if you want a more detailed explanation, please go to the prior session in this playlist. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewer, to connect with me on a professional level using LinkedIn. Or if you're, if you're a Facebook user, please like my Facebook page and you can connect with me on a personal level. You want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube, like the videos if you like them, share them, put them in playlists, let the world know about them. Also on my website, you can access my lectures organized by course and chapter. Now, if you're viewing this recording, it's, there's a good chance you are either a CPA student, which is a student that's studying for the exam, or if you are an accounting student. In either situation, I would like to let you know that this recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. If you like this recording, you can view hundreds of hours of video lectures on Jaeger, thousands of multiple choice questions with detailed solution, simulations with solution, textbook, blueprint integration for the exam. It's the only course that actually integrate the blueprint, audio lectures for retention purposes, electronic flashcards, plus other resources. Use the promo code PMF. You will get 15% off of the best valued course. You will benefit yourself and benefit this channel. Now I'm going to start with a quick review of the prior session. Remember in the prior session, we said at the end of the day, when we net all capital gains and capital losses, we're going to have the four groups, four groups. We could have short-term capital gain, uh, short-term capital gain, short-term capital loss, long-term capital gain, long-term cap long capital loss. Remember when we have a gain, it's taxed at the ordinary rate, which could be up to up to 37%, depending what your ordinary rate is. It could be 10, could be 5, it could be up to 37%. If you have a long-term capital gain, remember if you have a long-term capital gain, what we said we said you have to first ask yourself if it's a collectible. If it's a collectible, then you have to choose, if it's a collectible, you have to choose between 28% or your ordinary rate, the lesser of 28% or your ordinary rate, the lesser of these two. We said ignore the 25% for now. And if you're a long-term capital gain, and if you are not collectible, you could be subject to 20, 15, or no taxes on that long-term capital gain, which we'll see in a moment. Now, we did not talk about collectibles in the prior session. Let me tell you what collectibles are. Collectibles are work of arts, rugs or antique, metal or gem, stamped, alcoholic beverage. Well, simply if you have a winery and, you know, it's 10, 15, 20 year, a bottle of wine, historical object. Those are considered collectible. Those are if they are held long term, they are subject to a 28% alternative tax rate. It's either that or your ordinary rate. Okay? The lesser of these two. Now, let's take a look at the other long term capital gain. The other long term capital gain, the lesser of the ordinary rate or long term alternate, alternate rate. Okay? And this could be 20. 15 or zero. When do you apply the 0%? When your taxable income does not exceed 77,200 if you're married, filing jointly. When do you use the 20%? When your taxable income exceeds 479. And in between, you would use 15%. And this is what I told you in the prior session. We talked about this in the prior session. And, um, you know, if you're married, filing separately or single or head of a household, you have different, you have different uh, thresholds. Okay, this is basically a review. Now, Let's talk about the new information about the netting process. What's going to happen is this. What's going to happen is this. If you are netting, you're going to have two long-term uh, capital gains. The first, you're going to have long-term collectibles. You could either have a gain or a loss. So with the collectibles, you could have a gain on the collectibles or a loss. The first thing you do is you net them out. Simply put, let me give you an example. You have 10,000 of gains. 3,500 of losses. Overall, what's the net? The net is 6,500 gain. First, you net them. Okay. Now, then you net the long-term non-collectible, the long-term capital gain and the long-term capital loss that are non-collectible that are subject to 0, 15, and 20%. So I'm going to give you some numbers. 
20,000 of gains, 8,000 of losses. Overall, you have a gain of 12,000. Then you net the short-term capital gain and the short-term capital losses. Short-term capital gain, you have 25,000. Short-term capital loss, you have 10,000. Overall, you have a gain of 15,000. Okay, you have a gain, a gain, and a gain. Guess what? You're going to pay taxes on each gain separately. This is going to be 28% or the lower or the lower of your ordinary rate. This is going to be either 0, 15, or 20%, and this is going to be your ordinary rate. So this could this could happen. You have gains on all of them. Okay, or what you can do is you could have rather than gains, we can change the numbers and have more gains and losses. You could also have one scenario you could have is losses on all of them losses losses and losses what do we do with losses we're going to see later on we're going to carry them over so you could get all gain on all losses now or what you could do is you could have the following you could have let me go back and use some numbers ten thousand and two thousand of losses so you could have a gain of eight thousand here and you could have a loss here. I'm going to make this a loss. So we have a gain of 4,000, losses of 9,000. You could have a loss of 5,000. If you have opposite sign in these two groups, the blue and the green, first you net them out. What's the net? The net is plus 3,000 gain. So you have a net gain of plus 3,000. Okay, then you compute your short term gain and short term loss. And let's give you for the short term gain, let's give it a gain. Let's give it a gain of 30. Um, let's assume you have a short term gain of 30,000, a short term loss of 10,000. So overall, you have a gain of 20,000. Okay, you have a gain of 20,000. Well, guess what? You have a long term gain, which is a collectible of 3,000 short-term capital gain of 20,000. This could happen too, okay? You have, so basically you net them out and you end up with gain. So basically you have gain on both. But what you did first is you net those two. So first you net those two groups. If they're the opposite sign, you net them out. Now, let's assume, keep the same scenario, I'm gonna change the short-term. Let's assume in the short-term you have a loss of, uh, you have a short-term capital gain of 3,000 and short-term capital loss of 10,000. Now, overall, you have a loss of 7,000. Now, what you do, since they have an opposite, you have a loss and a gain, now you net those two out, and overall, you have a sh net short-term capital loss. You have a net short-term capital loss. Okay? And remember, this is 28%. Maybe forget about this last step. Just forget about this last step, what I just did, because I want to make sure I do it. I, I, I don't mislead you. Let's go back here. Let's assume we are standing here. A gain of 8,000, a loss of 5,000, and a loss of 7,000. First, okay, you net these two out, those two, and you have a gain of 3,000. Okay, just take it step by step. Then the loss here... With, which is 7,000, will offset the gain. So overall, you have a net short-term capital loss of 7,000. Oh, I'm sorry, of, of, of 4,000. All right, this is what I just did. I did it twice, that's fine. Okay, let me change the scenario. Let's keep, let's keep a loss here of 7,000. And let's change the green into a gain now. So we have a gain in collectibles, a gain overall for the non-collectible of 5,000. That's also a gain. So somehow we have, you know, 20,000 of gains, 15,000 of losses. We end up with 5,000 of gains. Notice we have gains, gains, and losses. Now, how are we going to use those $7,000 of losses? Are we going to net them out against 
the 8,000, what are we going to net them out against the non-collectible, the 5,000? Remember the simple rule. In your, in, if you are the taxpayer, which would you prefer? Obviously, not obviously, what you should do is you said, I prefer to take my losses and net them out against the 8,000. Why? Because the $8,000 gain will have, will, 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 they have a higher tax rate than the non-collectible. Therefore, what you do is you take the losses and you net them against the, the gains that you have to pay more taxes on, which is the collectible gains. If you used up, you know, in this situation where the losses will be used up, you're going to end up with a thousand here of gain and you'll end up with 5,000 gain. Okay. Now let's assume you had losses of, you know, losses of um, 10,000. Again, you will do the same thing. This, this gain will go down to zero and you would use 2,000 here, what's left, and you will have what's gain net long term capital gain of 3,000. So what you did is you took the 10,000, first you offset this 8,000, then the remainder, which is 2,000, offset at the 5,000. I hope this makes sense. I mean, I hate to put those in a, in a specific uh, steps. I'm going to work more examples. Hopefully it will make sense. But logically, I hope it makes sense to you. So let's take a look at this example. We have short term, we have long term, and under long term, we have 28%, the collectible. We don't have anything under the 25%, and we have the non-collectible. So under the short term, we have 13,000 gain and 2,000 losses. We net them out. Overall, we have a net of a gain of 11,000. We're going to net the 28%. So this is this was basically the red. This, this is basically the red. This is what we did. We did the red first. Okay. The 28% were the blue. We net the blue. We have 12,000 of gains, um, 20,000 of losses. We have a net of 8,000. Then the... Uh, this was the green. The green is we have only have a gain of 3,000 net of 3,000. So notice we have gain, losses, and gains. The first thing we do is we net those two groups together. Okay, so I have 8,000 of losses. What's going to happen? This 8,000, it's going to eliminate this gain. It's going to make this gain go down to zero, and I'm going to have 5,000 left. Now this 5,000, now it's going to move into my short-term uh, short-term uh, column and it's going to reduce my short-term gain by 5,000 end up with net short-term capital gain. In other words, in other words, here's what you need to know. You don't take the 8,000, okay, and you net it against the 11,000. Those two groups will have to be netted out first. You are better off doing so, but the first step is long-term, the 28 and the 0, 15 and 20 percent. They're basically, they're both long-term. They have to net each other out. Although you are better off starting with the 11,000, but you can't do that because both of those are basically the same group. One is 28, one is 0, 15, and 20, but you have to stay there, okay? Now, when you have a loss, which we'll see, then you can choose between the higher of the two. But when you have a loss in this group, you net them out first, okay? Let's look at a different scenario. You have short term, which was the red column. You have a, a loss of 2,000. Um, under the 28%, which was the blue co the blue color, it, you have a gain of 8,000. You have a gain of 8,000, a loss of 2,000. Now you have a 25% column. You have a gain, and you have a loss against the uh, 0, 15, and 20%. Now, what you do is this. You have a loss here. Now, this loss has to be, if there's any gains within this group, it will have to reduce the gain. Yes, we have an $8,000 gain and a $4,000 gain. Which gain are you going to, which gain are you going to offset? This is 25%. This is 28%. You're going to offset the higher gain. So you're going to use this 5,000 of losses, offset 8,000. You're going to be left with 3,000 here. And basically this loss is gone. And the 4,000, there's nothing you can do. It's going to, you're going to bring it down for now. Okay. Now, you have a, a loss here of 2,000. Now, this loss can offset either the 25 or the 28. Which one it's going to offset? It's going to offset the 28. It's going to give you better tax advantage. So, this 2,000 of short-term losses, it's going to offset the 3,000, which is going to keep you $1,000 gain for the 28%. In the 4,000, we could not reduce it. Therefore, we have net capital gain of 28%, a net capital gain of 25%. Okay, this is what we're going to end up. We cannot net the gain against the gain because they're both gain. Okay? No 28, 25 netting because 
they don't have the opposite sign okay net it because of the opposite sign the first thing is you know if they have an opposite sign you can net okay and it's netted first against the 28 percent because this 5,000 you're better off netting the 8,000 because it has 25 percent um, potential tax rate okay let's look at the third scenario you have a gain a gain and a loss what do you do now well first you're going to take this loss and offset it within this long-term group well if you take five thousand use a thousand of it it's going to bring this twenty eight thousand to zero and you're going to have four thousand left now this four thousand of losses we can use it to offset short-term capital gain which is we have three thousand of them we can use them all up so short-term capital loss is gone we no longer short-term capital gain is gone we no longer have a gain and what we're left with is one thousand dollar of net long-term capital loss now the question is what do we do with this remain re remainder basically we have a loss and what do we do with this loss well guess what we do with this loss we're going to carry it over we're going to carry it over to future years so here's what's going to happen this happens to be long term okay so if it's a short term a short term capital loss carry over to the current year retains its character as short term as combined with the short term items of the current year so if you have any carry over the following year it's going to be netted out with that short term and that long term capital loss which what we have a thousand of in this example what's going to happen next year it's going to be combined with the current long term items so next year when we start the following year we have long term capital loss of a thousand the long term loss carry over is first the long-term carry loss carry over is first offset any 28 percent gain of the current year then the 25 then the 0 15 and 20 percent it makes sense because first you want to reduce your taxes as much as possible so the 28 percent is has the highest tax bracket so you will use that to offset the highest tax bracket then you would use it against the 25 percent if you have any capital gain of 25 percent then you would use it against 0 10 and the 15 okay and the best way to illustrate this concept is to actually work an example to see how this works. So let's take a look at this example. In 2018, Barta had a $28,000 loss from the sale of a personal residence. So a loss from a sale of personal residence. Let's stop right here and hopefully we know how to deal with this. What can we do with this loss? It's a loss and it's personal residence. I'm sorry, this is a personal loss basically as it's non-existence. You're not gonna factor it anywhere. You cannot use it, you cannot do anything with it. So be why? Because it's personal residence, personal use asset, okay? She also purchased a patent on a rubber bonding process from an individual inventor for 7,000 and resold it in two months for 18,000. The patent had not yet been reduced to practice, okay? And Berta purchased the patent as an investment. So basically she bought the patent and she sold the patent so she sold the right to the patent now she she bought it for seven so her basis is seven and she sold it for eighteen thousand sold for eighteen thousand or consideration received eighteen thousand eighteen thousand minus seven is eleven thousand hopefully you know we have a realized gain of eleven thousand now your first impression might be oh yes i do have a gain and this gain is short term now there's a special rule for patent I just want to let you know what it is that if the inventor okay transfer all the rights to the buyer and here we we is we have we're gonna to have to assume this because she was able to resolve the patent so she, the 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 inventor sold all the rights therefore what's gonna happen we're gonna treat this eleven thousand as long-term capital gain just know this I don't know if you're gonna see it on the CPA exam or if you will see it anywhere else when the inventor sells the right to the patent and the other person buy it and then they resell it when they resell it because they have full right to the patent it will always be as long as the seller gave up all the rights to the patent it will always be long-term capital gain so we're starting with 11,000 long-term capital gain in addition she had the following capital gain and losses from stock transaction long-term capital loss of 6,000 long-term capital loss carry over from the prior year of 12,000 short-term capital gain and short-term capital loss so what do we do let's look at long-term gain slash losses okay so we have eleven thousand from the patent we have a gain of eleven thousand from the patent we have a loss of six thousand 
and we have a carryover loss of 12,000. Remember, any carryover, it's netted with its own group, which is long term. So plus 11 minus 6 minus 12, which is 18 minus 18 negative. So we have overall a loss of 7,000 long term capital loss. Now we're going to net the short term. Now short term gain slash losses. We have $21,000 gain and we have a $7,000 losses. We're going to net them out and we're going to end up with $14,000 short term capital gain. Now what we can do, we can net these out. A gain of 14,000, a loss of seven, it's gonna give us a net short term capital gain of 7,000. And this is what we did, is we netted those transactions together, okay? Uh, <clears throat> if you have any questions, any comments about this recording, please email me. Um, if you want to visit my website for additional lectures, please do so. I strongly suggest you view the prior lecture to this one in case you were confused about the rates, you know, the 28 versus the 0, 15, and 20 for the long term. And if you happen to visit my website for additional lecture, please, please consider donating. If you're studying for your CPA, as always, study hard. It's worth it. Good luck.